We welcome you to this fourth Sunday in Advent as we celebrate God's gift of love. We wanted to share a few announcements about our schedule this Christmas week. Tomorrow, Monday, December 21st, is the day that will hold the most darkness. One of the traditions in the Christian world is to hold a blue Christmas service online. This service will be available on our YouTube channel at 6 o'clock p.m. If you would like to participate in this service from home, we invite you to have at least one candle or up to four candles in your worship space. We have all had a difficult year, and we pray this brief service will offer you hope and healing and a time of reflection. Then, on Thursday, December 24th, our online Christmas Eve service will be available at 6 o'clock a.m. This service will have a communion element, so we invite you to have bread and juice available for each person worshiping. Likewise, we invite you to have candles to light as we welcome the light of Christ into the world. Also on December 24th, we will hold an outdoor candlelight communion service in the back parking lot. This, of course, will only occur weather permitting. If it is raining, snowing, or the temperature drops below 50 degrees, we will not be able to hold this service. And please note, there was a bit of confusion as the e-news content for this service was compiled, but you do not need to bring candles or communion. We will have those elements available for you. Finally, we want to remind you about our Christmas offering benefiting Jubilee Project in Sneedville and our sister church in Ossery, Estonia. Those donations can be mailed in or dropped in the drop box at the church. Friends, even in the midst of a pandemic, there is much going on in the life of the church. We are so thankful that you are worshiping with us in this way. So let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. <laughs>
Behold, the Lord your God breathes new life into dead spaces. God's Messiah is coming into our world as God's final word. Life will triumph over death. Do not be afraid. We light the fourth Advent candle as a sign of our hope in God's redeeming love. The Messiah is coming to establish a kingdom in the shape of that very love. And this kingdom will last forever and ever. Come, Lord Jesus. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. As we continue in our time of worship together, we wanted to lift up some of our prayer concerns. 
Jim Snowden continues to be in the hospital and Shirley Snowden is recovering from a fall. Misty Stapleton's father is undergoing test and Lisa Weichel's father is recovering from a fall. Chase Mosley's father, Craig, had a farming accident. Please remember Mitch Robinson and Bob Andrew will be having treatments for skin cancer. Connie McDonald's daughter, Sandy, was in a car accident. And please remember Dave and Vicki Gibbs who have had procedures and tests. We also want to remember Joanne Weir and Ronnie Malloy is recovering from surgery. And of course, we do want to continue to remember those recovering from COVID, including Bethany Music, Jordan Leach's father, Audrey Leach, and Victoria Voyle's father, Dan Burns. But now friends, let us go to God in prayer. Mighty God, your faithfulness is magnified in the coming of your Son, in the long-awaited birth of the promised Messiah. May we, like Mary, proclaim your greatness as we rejoice in our Savior. We pray for the mission of your church, that we may proclaim the good news of the age as we rejoice in the gift of our Savior. We pray for all who suffer, that we may feed the hungry and lift up the lowly through the power of your holy and life-giving spirit. And we pray for your creation, that we may safeguard its well-being from generation to generation to your honor and glory. And in this season, we remember before you those who have died, that they may rest with you eternally in your kingdom where there is no end. It is through Christ, with Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit that we magnify you, Almighty God, forever and ever, as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
believe I've told you I've been meeting via Zoom for the last several months with a group of guys from college. We've shared some of the good things going on in our lives, but also some of our biggest disappointments. And every week we laugh our heads off. We meet every three weeks and it's become one of the things I look forward to the most. And I don't want to share too much of what goes on in our group because it's confidential, but one of the things that has come out is that we all have times we feel like we are the only one. We're the only one who feels the way we feel. We're the only one who thinks the way we think. We're the only one dealing with our particular problems. But if we all feel that way, are we really the only one? I'm reminded of a seminar I attended for my superintendent days that focus on the issues regarding clergy ethics. And we were being trained how to deal with clergy behaving badly. And the most interesting insight for me was when we started talking about our authentic selves. Who are you really? And is there anyone in your life that you can truly be yourself with? Or are you always wearing a mask? Well, one of the occupational hazards of the ministry is that ministers want to give the appearance that we have the perfect marriage and we've raised perfect children. But being perfect can be exhausting. And what about you? Do you feel like when you go to church there are parts of you that you have to leave at home? And you fear if people really knew you, they would throw you out of the church. So you hesitate letting people know the real you. One of the best pieces of advice they gave us at our seminar was to find some outlet outside of church where we could really be ourselves. Find a group of people who have a similar interest. Find a healthy activity. Find a new hobby. Find something where you can really express yourself in a creative way. We learn that people who feel all alone or who have a Messiah complex are the ones most likely to act out in inappropriate ways. They get to the point where they feel like they are going to break and sometimes though, just having one person understand helps. I hadn't ever really thought about it before, but I think what impressed me about our Bible story today is two women who found out that there was someone who understood. Elizabeth and Mary both found out that they were pregnant under mysterious circumstances. Nobody was going to believe their stories, and I would imagine they were tempted to keep this life-changing news to themselves. But when they were around each other, their stories just came out. And how good for them to realize, hey, I'm not the only one. From angelic visits, Elizabeth heard that she would have a son, even though she considered herself too old and barren. And Mary heard that she was going to give birth to the Son of God. Well, for Mary, this news must have been very troubling because if you remember, she was so young. Some say she was probably only about 13 and she had never slept with Joseph. What would people think? What a scandal this could turn out to be. Well, Mary and Elizabeth found an ally in each other. They found someone that they could share the strange dreams that would define their lives. Sometimes just having one is enough. Well, the picture that you see here is a painting from my cousin's extended family. And my mother owns this painting. And it's probably the thing that all of us love the most from their home. And every time I look at it, my eye is instantly drawn to Mary. But then as I focus in a little bit, I notice Jesus. And Jesus was there all along. Jesus would always be in Mary's life. He would never be far from her heart. The Gospel of Matthew says He would be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. Well, Mary's story is like no one else's in history. Who else would bear the Son of God? Nobody else would ever have that experience. 
I wonder if she ever felt lonely. But Mary was not alone because God was in her crib and Elizabeth was her soul sister. Elizabeth's story and Mary's story would be forever linked. And of course, she was linked to Jesus. How she loved that baby. She nursed him. She changed his diapers. She was there when he said his first words and took his first steps. She was there as Jesus was learning about the world. I'll just have to confess, in my own life, there were some days when I wanted to strangle my imperfect children because they could get so out of control. For them, every stick that they picked up became a sword or a gun. Our kids were into mischief all the time. Emergency room visits were a monthly occurrence. And there were these times where it just got so strange because they would get these glazed looks in their eyes and you couldn't tell them anything. But there were other times when they were the cutest and sweetest people on the face of the earth. My heart could barely contain the love I felt for them. I remember one time my mother was visiting with us and my kids were being especially cute and I must have looked like I thought they were precious because my mother said to me, Walter, I see how you look at those boys. Do you realize that when you were that age, I felt exactly the same way about you? I don't know why, but that floored me. My feelings for my boys was strong, and to think that's how somebody felt about me was humbling. Because a lot of times, I don't feel very lovable. Yet Scripture tells me that God loves me, and God loves you. I taught a Sunday school lesson this past week by Rick Warren, and he taught us that God loves us irrespective of our behavior. God loves you because God is love, and God made you. John 3.16 tells us that God so loved the world that He gave His only Son so that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. Love. That's our theme for today. God's love for you is so great that He steps into your life to show you that He's thinking about you. And isn't that amazing? Isn't that humbling? And Mary, can you imagine her dreams for her child, hearing that He was the Son of God? She loved Him even before He got here. She dreamed of watching him play with his brothers and sisters. She dreamed of how she would care for him and how he would care for her. All those dreams were seasoned in love. And God loves, looks at you at the same way. Because God has plans for you. God has hopes for you. There are wonderful things in store that you don't know anything about yet. But one thing we can say for certain is you are loved. And when you have Christ, our promise for today is that you are never alone. And thanks be to God.